God attributes in Bible versus Quran. Does God forget? Does God sleep? Can anyone in this life see God face to face? Does God need to refresh? Does God order people to commit sins? Does God knows everything happening? Does God regret? By reading these article you will know the Islamic and the Christianity answers. Does God forget? Bible. Why do you forget us forever? Why do you so long forsake us? Lamb 520. How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? Psalm 13 verse 1. Quran. And say, O Gabriel, to Muhammad, peace be upon him the angels do not descend of their own accord. They only descend at Allah's command. Everything ahead of us in the hereafter, everything behind us in the world, and everything in between the world and the hereafter, all belong to Allah. Your Lord, O Messenger, would not forget anything. Quran Surah Maryam 19 hours 64 minutes. Does God sleep? Awake, why do you sleep, O Lord? Psalm 423 Then the Lord awaked as one out of sleep, and like a mighty man that shouts by reason of wine. Psalm 423 Allah is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. He is the one who lives perfectly without any death or deficiency. He exists by himself and is not in need of any of his creation. The creation only exists through him and is always in need of him. Drowsiness or sleep does not come upon him due to the perfection of his life and existence. He alone controls the heavens and the earth. No one can intercede before him without his acceptance and permission. He knows what has happened in the past and what will happen in the future. The creation has no share in his knowledge unless he wills to grant them some of it. His throne covers the vastness of the heavens and the earth. It is not difficult for him to preserve the heaven and the earth. He is high in his essence and attributes and great in his dominion and authority. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah 2 255 Can anyone in this life see God face to face? Bible Jacob wrestled God who said to him, Let me go, for the day is breaking, but Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob, then the Lord said, Your name shall be no more called Jacob but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Tell me, I pray your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Penel, saying, For I have seen God face to face. Gen. 32 22. Quran. No vision can grasp him, but his grasp is over all vision, he is above all comprehension, yet is acquainted with all things. Quran 6 103. Vision cannot encompass him, but his vision covers and encompasses all things. He is the one who is subtle with his righteous servants and is aware of them. Surah Al Anam 103. When Moses came to meet his Lord for the appointment he had been assigned, which was a full forty nights, and his Lord spoke to him giving him instructions and prohibitions and so on. Moses desired to see his Lord, so he asked to see him. Allah the Exalted replied, You will not see me in the life of this world, because you will not be able to endure that, but look instead at the mountain when, reveal myself to it. If it remains in its place and is not affected then you will be able to see me. But if it becomes flattened, then you will not be able to see me in the life of this world. Then when Allah revealed himself to the mountain it crumbled to dust, and Moses fell down unconscious. When he recovered from his unconsciousness, he said. I declare your perfection O Lord, and that you are far above any deficiency being ascribed to you, and I turn to you asking for forgiveness for having asked to see you in this world. And I am the first of my people to believe. Quran Surah Al-Araf 7 143 Does God need to refresh? Bible for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested, and was refreshed. Exo. 31.17. Quran. We created the heavens and the earth and all between them in six days, nor did any sense of weariness touch us. Quran 50.38. And I created the heavens and I created the earth and whatever is between the heavens and the earth in six days, despite my power to create them in one moment. And I was not affected by tiredness as the Jews say. Surah Kaf. 38. Does God knows everything happening? Bible And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where are thou? Genesis 3 verses 8 and 9 
the Prophet Muhammad said to his Quran. We created the heavens and the earth and all between them in six days, nor did any sense of weariness touch us. Quran 50 38 And I created the heavens and I created the earth and whatever is between the heavens and the earth in six days, despite my power to create them in one moment. And I was not affected by tiredness as the Jews say. Surah Kaf, 38 Does God knows everything happening? Bible And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where are thou? Genesis 3 verses 8 and 9 al Quran. The treasures of the Gabe, unseen, are with Allah alone, no one besides him knows them. He knows all the created things in the land, such as animals, plants and inanimate objects. He knows whatever animals or plants there are in the sea. No leaf falls in any place, nor is there any seed of grain hidden in the earth, nor anything moist or dry, except that it is recorded in a clear book which is the preserved tablet. Quran Surah Al-An'am 659 Does God regret? Bible and the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. He said, For I am sorry that I have made them. Gen 6 6 7 Quran The word of thy Lord doth find its fulfillment in truth and in justice, none can change his words, for he is the one who heareth and knoweth all. Quran 6 1 15 The word of your Lord, namely the Quran, is complete in the truthfulness of its statements and the justice of its instructions and prohibitions. There is no one who can alter his words. He is the one who hears and knows the statements of his servants. Nothing is hidden from him and he will repay their actions. Surah Al-An'am, 115 But no change wilt thou find in Allah's way, of dealing no turning off wilt thou find in Allah's way, of dealing. Quran 35 43 The oaths that they took in Allah's name was not done in good faith and with a sound objective. It was only to be arrogant on earth and to deceive people. The evil plot only rebounds on those who plotted it. So are these arrogant plotters waiting for anything but Allah's established practice, which is their destruction as he had destroyed those predecessors of theirs who were similar to them. You will not find any change to Allah's practice in destroying those who are arrogant, such that the destruction does not come on them, nor any diversion such that it falls on others besides them. Because it is an established divine practice. Surah Fatr, 43 Does God order people to commit sins? Bible when the Lord first spoke to Jose he said to him, Go take to yourself a wife of harlotry and have children of harlotry, for the land has committed great harlotry by forsaking the Lord. Hose. 1 colon 2 God said to the children of Israel, Every woman shall borrow of her neighbor jewels of silver and gold, and remaint, and you shall put them upon your sons. And upon your daughters and you shall spoil the Egyptians. Exo. 322 so they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels and remained, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. Exo.12.35 Quran If the idolaters commit an indecent act, they defend it, saying they found their fathers doing it and that Allah had commanded them to do it. Tell them O Muhammad, indeed Allah does not command the wrong, rather, he forbids it, so how can you claim such a thing about him? Or are you O idolaters inventing things about Allah, saying what you do not know about him? Quran Surah al araf 728 Is it justice to accuse the children of their father's sins? Bible I am the Lord, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations. Deuteronomy 5 verse 7 Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. Isaiah 14:21. And the Lord said, Go through the city, and smite, let not your eye spare, neither have you pity. Slay utterly old and young both maids and little children, and woman. Ezekiel 9 verse 5 Quran Say, O messenger, to these idolaters, shall I search for someone other than Allah as a Lord when he, may he be glorified, is the Lord of everything. He is the Lord of those things that you worship besides him. No innocent person will bear the sin of another. Then your return will be to your Lord alone on the day of judgment, and he will inform you about religious matters that you used to differ about when you were in the world. Allah is the one who made you successors of those whom came before you on earth, so that you inhabited after them. He has raised some of you in rank over others, in terms of physical form, livelihood and other aspects, in order to test you through what he has given you. Your Lord, O Messenger, is quick in delivering justice, since anything that is approaching is close. 
and he is also forgiving and compassionate toward those of his servants who repent to him. Quran Surah Al-Anam 6 164-165 The Prophet Muhammad said to his army before going to a fight, Depart in the name of Allah, and by his help. And kill not any old man nor young boy nor child, nor woman, but be good doers for Allah loves those who do good. Nor child, nor woman, but be good doers for Allah loves those who do good. One will likewise find, that the Christians also attribute to God what the Jews before them attributed to God before them like regret and anxiety as in Genesis 6. 6 and rest after hard work as in Exodus 17 verse 31 and sleep and awaking as in Psalm 65 verse 78. And screaming as in Isaiah 13 verse 42. Similarly, the claim that God is like a blazing fire ASI in Exodus 18 verse 24 and the likes of these are many. Some of the qualities that Christianity attributes to God. Christians like the Jews before them attribute much of what the Jews attributed to God as it is contained in the first part of the Bible called the Old Testament. This is one of many blameworthy characteristics they attributed to God and his messengers as are the following. a. Poor selection of prophets. b. Ignorance of the future and the unseen world. c. A basic lack of wisdom. This anthropomorphism is something indicative of their drawing similarities of God from his creation from their own brains, leading them to describe him in way that are human-like. From these erroneous descriptions is the following. The Lord smelled the soothing aroma, and the Lord said to himself, Genesis 8 21 exalted is Allah from what they attribute to him. One can also find descriptions about God amongst the Jews and Christians whereby they claim that God regretted and had anxiety. And it is only possible to regret if you make a mistake out of ignorance of the outcome of the act in question. And here is a quote from Genesis 6 verse 6. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Exalted is Allah from what they attribute to him. It is then no surprise that the Jews and Christians also attribute to God that he becomes tried and that it is necessary for him to rejuvenate after completing arduous work. This is ridiculous to suggest that the one who if he wanted for something to be, he says be and it is. And the examples are many where they the Christians attribute derogatory things to God. And anyone with an objective eye and with any intelligence would notice that this is something unacceptable for God Almighty. From among some of these incredulous claims is that much like a human God slept and arose from his slumber, in the Psalms 65 verse 78. Exalted is Allah from their attribution to him Almighty. They also say that God breathes out fire from his nose, as is found in Samuel 2.22 and Numbers 2 and in Isaiah 30 verse 33. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of sulfur, kindles it. There is no doubt that fire is destructive and damaging unlike light which shines and exalted is Allah from what they attribute to him. Idis also said that God ordered the killing of the Amalekites, Samuel I 15 3 now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all that they have, and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Likewise in Numbers 31 colon 17 now kill all the boys. And kill every woman who has slept with a man. And the similitudes of these are many, examples of barbaric pillaging of people unbefitting to be described as what God commanded. Exalted is Allah from their attribution to him Almighty. Similarly, they also claim that God whistles as is mentioned in Zechariah 10 colon 8. I will whistle for them and gather them in, for I have redeemed them, and they shall be as many as they were before. Likewise they say that God also claps with his hands as mentioned in Ezekiel and Numbers 71. Exalted is Allah from their attribution to him Almighty. They also claim that God has private parts in some of their descriptions of him and that he had blood like in passage 28 chapter 20 from Acts. They claim for God a head, a face, hair, ears, eyes a torso a heart and a back. Exalted is Allah from their attribution to him Almighty. And there are endless examples of these slanders against God that the Christians are guilty of that the tongue feels shy to make mention of especially when you're attributing these limited things to Allah. True Creed of Salaf Regarding the Attributes of Allah The subject of the divine attributes and names is one of the greatest requirements of Islam, and one of the most noble of all sciences, and one of the most critical in the minds of people. Great disputes have occurred in this subject, due to what the innovators invented by engaging and delving into Allah's essence, names, and attributes. The most dangerous of these innovations what was invented by the Jamia, who attributed imperfections to Allah, and denying the attributes of perfection. Which Allah himself affirmed for himself and which were affirmed for him by the Prophet, Salallahu alayhi wa salam dash. Then it was what the Mutasila innovated, and other sects. Many Muslims were affected by this innovation, and engaged in it, which caused them to divide, and caused the appearance of those who denied Allah's names and attributes. Those who denied his attributes while affirming his names, and those who affirmed his names and some of his attributes.
There was also the condemned toll, and a lot of people were deviated due to these innovative methodologies, especially in the present era in which different cultures have mixed with each other. And the media is used to spread these beliefs. Also, in this era, the truth has become strange for some people, and logic is used in many branches of knowledge, away from divine revelation. Today the importance of the names and attributes of Allah, which increases the faith of a man and makes him aware of the greatness of the Creator, has become less. Here we will mention a brief introduction to the belief of the pious predecessors, and with Allah is success. No, may Allah have mercy upon you, that the pious Salaf and the Imams of Sunnah, were unanimous in their sayings about faith in Allah and testifying to His unity. And that Allah is described by His attributes mentioned in His book, Quran, and the authentic sayings of His Messenger, Salalahu Lehi wa Salam Dash. So they passed the texts as they came without distortion, denying them, speaking about their howness, or resembling them to creation. The methodology of the pious predecessors in Allah's attributes has three foundations. 1. To affirm for Allah the attributes that he or his prophet, Salalahu Lehi wa Salam affirmed for him. To believe in them, and that Allah praised himself with these names and attributes. The evidence for this is his saying, he is all hearing and all seeing, Allah. No one has the right to be worshipped except he, the ever-living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists, 2 colon 2 55. He is all-knowing, all-wise, A.R. Rahman over the throne rose, Istawa, 20 colon 5. And many other ayat, and hadiths too. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal said, We worship Allah with his attributes as he described himself. We do not exceed the Quran and Hadith. We say as he said, and we describe him as he described himself, and we do not exceed that. We believe in all of the Quran, the Mahakam, and the Mutasheba. 1. Abdurrahman bin al Qasim, d. 191h, the companion of Imam Malik, said, It is not permissible for anyone to describe Allah except with that which he described himself within the Quran, and one is not to resemble his, Allah's, two hands with anything, nor his face with anything, but he is to say, He, Allah, has two hands as he described himself in the Quran, and he has a face as he described himself. He is to stop at what Allah described himself within the book, Quran, there is no like to him, nor a similar. He is Allah la ilaha illa huwa, no deity is worthy of worship but he, as he described himself. 2. 2. To believe that Allah is free from any likeness to his creation. The basis for this is the saying of Allah, translation off the meaning dash, there is nothing like unto him, 42 11. Do you know of any who is similar to him? 19 hours 65 minutes. Nor is there to him any equivalent. 112 4. Ishik bin Raway, d. 238h, said, Tashbi, resembling likening Allah to creation, is to say, hand like a hand, or, similar to a hand, or, hearing like a hearing, or, similar to a hearing, so if one says, hearing like a hearing or similar to a hearing, then this is Tashbi. But if one says like Allah, the exalted said, Yad, hand, Sam, hearing, and Basar, sight, without saying, how, or saying, like a hearing or similar to a hearing, then this is not Tashbi. 3. 3. Not to delve into the kafiyah, howness, reality, of Allah's attributes which we have no knowledge of. The evidence for this is his saying, translation off the meaning dash, and they will never encompass anything of his knowledge, except that which he wills, 2 colon 2 55. Wake Ibn al Jara, d. 197h, said, regarding Allah's attributes, we submit to these hadiths as it came, and we do not say, how is this, nor, why was this sent down? 4. The belief in the attributes is the same as the belief in the essence. The belief of the Salaf and Allah Sunnah in Allah's attributes is like their belief in His essence. Al Hadib al Baghdadi, d. 463h. As for speech regarding the attributes, then what has been reported in the authentic Sunan, books of Hadith, the way of the Salaf is to affirm them. And to carry them upon their dahir, apparent meaning, and to deny, knowledge of, kafiya, i.e., their true nature how they are, and to negate tashbi, likening or resemblance to creation, for them. And the principle in this matter is that speaking about the attributes is a branch of speaking about the essence, dat, and thus follows it exactly and takes its example. So if it was known that the affirmation of the Lord, Rab, of all the worlds is an affirmation of existence, and not the affirmation of the true nature, i.e. the howness, kafiya of the essence, it would be the same with the attributes. It is an affirmation of their existence, that Allah does have these attributes, and not affirmation of defining, their nature, and speaking of its kafiya, how they are. 5. Abu Umar Muhammad bin Qudama, 6, d. 607h, said in some verses of poetry. And the saying regarding the attributes O my brothers is like that of the essence, and knowledge with clarification, of the correct belief. 
is to pass them on, affirm them, without disbelief without tashbi or transgression. 7. Their belief in all of Allah's attributes was upon one method, they didn't differ in their belief between the attributes, they applied the same method to all of the attributes. Al-Walid bin Muslim said, I asked Al-Azali, ADH Thori, Malik bin Anas, and Al-Laith bin Sa'd about the Hadiths of Sifat, the attributes, and they said, pass them on as they came. Sufyan ibn Uyana, d. 198h, said, Everything that Allah described Himself with in the Quran, its interpretation is its recitation, without, asking, how, and without likening Him, to creation. 8. Tall is the way of the Caliph, later generations after the time of the Salaf. It has not been proven that any of the pious predecessors made tall of the attributes of Allah, nor distorted its meaning. Contrary to that, they were all agreed upon the creed to believe in them without tall, and this is well known from them, and many scholars have testified to this throughout the centuries. We will mention a few of these scholars. Imam Tirmidhi, d. 270h, said in his Sunan. This is how it has been reported from Imam Malik, Sufyan bin Yayna and Abdullah bin Mubarak, that they said about these narrations, pass them without getting into their hauness. This is the saying of the scholars of Allah's Sunnah wal Jama. As for the Jahmiya, then they rejected these narrations and said that this is Tashbi, resembling Allah to his creation. In more than one place in the Quran, Allah mentioned his Yad, Hand, Basar, Sight, and Sam, Hearing. The Jahmiya made tall of these ayat, and interpreted it differently than how the people of knowledge interpreted it, and they said, Allah did not create Adam with his hand, they said. The meaning of Yad, Hand, Hear, meaning in the Ayah, 38 75, is Power, Kiwa. 9. Al Hussein al Bagawi, d. 516h, said, after speaking about several ayat and hadiths regarding Allah's attributes. Upon this, creed, were the Salaf of this nation of Islam, and the scholars of Sunnah. They all received these with faith and acceptance, while avoiding likening him to his creation or making to wheel, and rendering its knowledge, of Hauness, to Allah. 10. Ibn Qudama al Makdisi, d. 620h, said in his book, Lumat al Adikad, and upon this were the Salaf, and the Imams who came after them, may Allah be pleased with them. All of them were upon agreement on affirming and passing on the attributes that are in the Book of Allah, Quran, and what was reported in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah without making to wheel. Of them. He also said in the same book, after mentioning several ayat and hadith of Sifat, attributes. This, and what is similar to it, the Salaf were upon consensus on transmitting and accepting it, and they didn't reject it, nor made to wheel of it, nor resembled it to creation. This is just a sample of sayings of some of the scholars in different eras, and there are many others whom we did not mention. Authoring on the Creed of the Pious Salaf From the ones who authored books on the beliefs of the pious predecessors and narrated their sayings in this subject, in books of tafsir of the Quran include Abur Razak as Sanani, Ishak bin Raway, Baki bin Makhalid, Abdurrahman bin Abi Hadim, Ibn Jarir Atabari, Abu Bakr bin al Mundir, Abu Bakr bin Abdulaziz, Abu Ash Sheikh al Asfahani. Abu Bakr bin Murdaway, and others. All who are mentioned above passed away before 450 h. And similarly those who mentioned them in books on Sunnah, Refutation of Jamia, and Fundamentals of Religion, some examples are. Refutation of Jamia by Muhammad Abdullah al-Jufi, the teacher of Imam Bukhari. Kalkafal al-Ibad, by al-Imam al-Bukhari. As Sunnah, by Abu Dawood. As Sunnah, by Abu Bakr al-Athram. As Sunnah, by Abdullah son of Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. As Sunnah by Hanbal bin Ishaq. As Sunnah by Abu Bakr al Khalal. As Sunnah by Abu Ash Sheikh al Asfahani. As Sunnah by Abul Qasim at Tabarani. As Sunnah by Ibn Manda. Yusul as Sunnah by Ibn Abi Zamanin. Al Sharia by Al Ajuri. Al Yusul by Abu Umar at Talmanki. Refuting the Jamia by Uthman ad Darimi. Refuting the Jamia by Ibn Manda. Refuting the Jamia by Ibn Abi Hadim. And many others. Some of the mentioned above are from the pious Salaf, and the rest were from the generations before 500 H. The four Imams, the two Safayans, ADH Thori and Ibn Uyana, the two Hamads, Ibn Zayd and Ibn Abi Salama, and the two Ibn Abi Shabas, Abu Bakr and Abu Jafar, Abu Yusuf, Al Laythbi, Sad. Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawud, Atirmidi, Al Nasai, Ibn Khazimah, Ibn Majah, Ibn Hibban, Al Azai, Ibn Abi Layla. Abu Abayd al Qasim bin Salam, Ishaq bin Raway, Abu Hadim al Razi. Muhammad bin Nasr al Marwazi and many others were all on the same creed, Akita, upon the madhab of the pious Salaf. We ask Allah to benefit everyone from this site and guide anyone who opposes the book and Sunnah. Certainly he is able to do that.
And may Allah's peace and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad and his family and companions. Source 1. Narrated by Ibn Bada in Alabana al Kubra. 2. Narrated by Ibn Abi Zamanin in Yusul as Sunnah, page 75. 3. Narrated by his student at Tirmidhi in his Sunan, 242. 4. Narrated by Abdullah the son of Imam Ahmad in his book, As Sunnah, 1267, with a Sahih chain. 5. Dam at Tal, by Ibn Qudamah, page 15, with a Sahih chain, Sierra Lam and Nubala by ADH Dahabi, 18283, with a different Sahih chain. 6. The brother of Muwafafak ad Din Abdullah bin Qudamah, the author of Al Mughni, and Lumat al Adikad. 7. Dale Tabakat al Hanabila, by Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, 3121. 8. Kitab as Sifat, by Ad Darakutni, page 70. 9. Al Jaim al Kabir, Sunan at Tirmidhi, 242 43. 10. Shar as Sunnah, by Al Bagawi, 1170.